Hey, hey. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the April instance of the Southern Fried VNN user group meeting. Uh, we are doing as we do every month, uh, getting together to talk all things DNN. Uh, we have a collection of folks here online with us, and then we post these uh, videos both online for replay on the Southern Fried website, on YouTube, on dnncommunity.org website. And the point is uh, we're diving in to talk ideas and issues, help each other out with uh, thoughts on ways to approach different things inside of DNN. And we have the uh, wonderful bonus benefit of being able to spend time with uh, some fantastic developers and creators of content and ideas within the DNN uh, development community. And uh, tonight we are joined by uh, Christopher Hammond. Uh, so we'll be talking with him in just a moment and doing some introductions. But as we always do at the beginning of our SoFry DNN meetings, uh, we start a little bit with community and a little bit with uh, things that are going on around us. Uh, Dave and uh, you know everyone else, uh, Daniel and uh, Jeremy, I'll kind of pass uh, to you. Um, things normally slow down in the summer. You know, we, we kind of have a lot of different things going on, and during the summer, things slow down a little bit as far as content showing up on the website. Uh, but uh, it's been a little bit here from the uh, DNA community blog, and it's been a uh, too sexy focus uh, last several uh, last several days, last several months. Um, what uh, what do we feel? Is there other news in the community to talk about? It's uh, not too sexy because too sexy is definitely uh, moving and shaking. Well, if you're asking me, I, Jeremy, I really Jeremy. enjoyed that. Oh, I am. Or can you hear me now? You're good. We hear you now. I really enjoyed that Facebook conversation that was a little awkward by that um, whoever that was saying that, you know, DNN didn't um, switch to .NET Core. I thought that was really interesting. Awkward topic, I'm but I enjoyed hard. it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not uh, not logged in, but I could bring that up and we could go look for it. Uh, no, uh, that's okay. It. That's, no, that's okay. No, 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 that's okay. We don't want to review it. I'm just I'm just saying, oh. even though it was <laughs> awkward, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah. We had a, a few years back a uh, DNN versus WordPress. Why for, why against, what's different, what's you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, it was a great conversation, great evening. Yeah. Um, Daniel, uh, anything else from the community uh, that you want to bring up? David, anything that you want to mention uh, that I could uh, bring up or mention? Uh, Did anyone get any details on DNN okay. Connect? Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Chris. We do have uh, DNN Connect this coming up uh, at the end of June, beginning of July, I believe. Um, in France, Mio. And uh, if you have not registered, uh, I'm sure you can still get in to that. Uh, yep, there you go, June 30th through July the 3rd. And um, looking forward to, to, to being back together in person. So that'll be fantastic and uh, far enough away from the, uh, the chaos over in the western side. Uh, yeah. I myself have still not been, but uh, you know, for those of you who've been to uh, United States-based uh, this side of the pond events, we have uh, a different kind of business conference uh, when we get together here. And uh, DNN Connect is famously different, it's a different speed, a different pace, a lot more personal connections and time spent. It's, uh, it's a good time, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there. Uh, all right. Uh, well, uh, I will mo mention for uh, just a moment, uh, kind of um, some sad news and information. Just uh, you know, for those of you know, who know uh, Mitch Sellers and the things that he's been uh, going through with he and his family, they've been um, you know loving and spending a lot of their focus and efforts on uh, on their daughter Nora, uh, who uh, passed away just uh, just recently in the last day or two. Um, so I I just encourage you if if Mitch has touched you in any way, uh, helped you out, um, 
and or if you just know a little bit about him and uh, what he brings to everyone he meets, uh, I would encourage everyone to bring thoughts and prayers and uh, just a, a moment or two thinking about Mitch and his family and the things they're going through. Um, it's, uh, it's something that I personally believe, even if you catch this message six months later and you, uh, you think about Mitch, I think it's still worth it and it has a benefit. So I uh, just want to let, uh, let him know and let the community know that, uh, we're all thinking about you, Mitch. Uh, Chris Stock, Chris Stock, we are going to be having a, uh, you know, presentation here where um, we are gonna dive into custom module packaging. Um, I mention every meeting or, or time when I'm having to introduce and, and spend uh, some time talking to Chris uh, that uh, forever uh, I will call him by his, uh, his handle that I first learned him on Twitter or the DNN uh, blogs and, and um, forums and things like that. Chris Stock is how I refer to him in person in my head. And when I meet you, I say, hey, Chris Stock, how are you doing? <laughs> Um, I think that's uh, a funny thing of our digital world that uh, we can know people by tags and then that's the permanent thing. I'll always put an S on the end of Mandeep's just, just because uh, it's, it's a permanent addition. Um, but, uh, you know, you will have seen Chris around for quite a long time. Um, he, within DNN, he has been a staple of the beginning steps for many developers. And that has been a staple of understanding and getting your feet wet within DNN, understanding how things go. And uh, because of that, Chris has seen a lot of um, you know, visibility within the community uh, that is well, well deserved. And uh, we always appreciate him being around. So we can hit the Chris Stock website and see some pictures back from DNN World. We can hit ChrisHammond.com and see some of the photography and things that he's done with, uh, with cars. Uh, we can grab things off of the website, uh, new store, you know what? I could always back up um, just a moment and mention that within the DNA community, we, we don't wanna forget, we wanna make sure we give enough time to make sure it's importance is presented well. Uh, there's a, a faceless version of a brand new store system for DNA store. Um, anyways, uh, you can get Hammerflex there. Uh, that's important to say. Uh, we could spend minutes and minutes talking about that because that's important. Um, compared to the new store. Um, so Hammerflex is available on the store. We can head out to uh, GitHub and get those DNN templates and start working with aforementioned templates to understand how to get organized and how to get moving uh, when you're doing module and team development in DNN. So I think what we're doing today is a bit of a, an advanced dive to talk a little bit about um, some customization and options and ideas for how to put these things together. And uh, with that, I'll pass it to you, Chris, and look forward to hearing uh, from you again. All righty. Thank you, Ryan, and thanks for that introduction. If uh, let me go ahead and try to get my screen sharing here, and mm -hmm. uh, your uh, audio is perfect. Get a thumbs up if uh, everyone can uh, see a screen. Appreciate it. Perfect. So yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for the intro, Ryan. And uh, I think actually I, I know most of the. Uh, most of the gentlemen here on the uh, on the meeting, but for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm based out of St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, been a, a DNN core team member, trustee, employee, MVP, and user for what 20 years now, almost 20 years coming up. Um, been doing this a while. The uh, the templates, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit today. I, I was just looking uh, at some stuff last night as I was putting the deck together here. And, uh, I think I. I put them into the Visual Studio Marketplace back in 2012. So it's been 10 years now. Um, prior to that, they were available on CodePlex um, and then moved to moved to GitHub. Uh, and then before that, I was just, I was was uh, here in St. Louis working for Engage Software. We were doing DNN training. I took that to, uh, to California, went to work for DNN Corp for a while. Uh, working through, we built up a training program there, and then uh, got sick of paying for California. Moved back to uh, moved back to Missouri uh, about eight or nine years ago now. I I got a couple different websites. Obviously, uh, the two that are still utilizing DNN are ChrisDoc.com and ChrisHammond.com. Um, the ChrisDoc.com is more my business consulting side gig stuff. 
Uh, Chris Ham is just a blog with uh, a, a lot of uh, aggregation of, of my billions of other blogs that I have out there because uh, unlike the rest of the world, I actually still have content that I blog um, besides DNN stuff. Um, and, and unfortunately, I have too many different websites and domains, so they all kind of pull into one uh, if you go to chrishammond.com. But uh, let me actually, let me run back here. So uh, back to the, the topic for today, extending my module development templates. So uh, as Ryan said, a lot of people have used those templates over the years. Um, they're, they're fairly basic. They're a great way to get up and running and easy to get started. But uh, oftentimes people are looking for how can they do more with them? What can they extend uh, if they include additional controls or additional views? How do they include those into the, uh, into the projects? that they're, they're creating from those templates, or even how do you extend the templates themselves so that you don't have to uh, do the same level of effort uh, every time you create a new project, if you've got, say, some new views or templates that you want to include. So we'll briefly touch on that in the, uh, in the session today. And uh, let me see here. I don't know if I can see any of the, uh, the, the tech, the chat's coming through. So if anyone's trying to text me anything in the chat, I'm not going to see it until after we're done here. Um, anyways. Uh, quick uh, overview of what we're going to cover today. I'll just talk through my local environment, uh, the tooling that I've got in place. Um, we'll go through the templates, where you can get them, uh, create, create a quick new module from them. We'll install that module, show you how to then use it, uh, and then start working through kind of customizing them a little bit with including custom DLLs, uh, including other files. Uh, and then uh, I'd, I don't have a bullet in there for uh, actually extending the templates themselves, but I've got a slide in there for that. So jumping in here, uh, DNN versions uh, for my local environment. So I've got uh, a DNN 9.10.1 uh, install here. I just hadn't upgraded it to 9.10.2. Um, I always work with the latest version or the near latest version. I'm not on, on the, the, the latest dot release, but um, I always recommend people do that as, as much as they can. Uh, it, it infuriates me when I hear from people that are running DNN five still, but there's business out there for people to support and upgrade that. Uh, I get people that have, uh, platforms and products and projects that they built off of the old tooling. Um, but obviously being a DNN diehard, I think it's important to try to stay up to date and, and move along through, uh, through the upgrade process so that you're not doing it once every 10 years uh, and going through the pain that that would cause. Uh, so I'm when you're doing your module development that you're working with what I would call the lowest common denominator. What do you need to be able to support? What's the minimum version you need to be able to support? If you're running your own business, you're running your own website, oftentimes you can support uh, newer versions or the latest version of DNN. If you are supporting customers who are maybe on older versions, you may not be able to do so. So you might have to set your development environment up in a different way where you're using an older version. That being said, I discourage it. Um, so my local environment, I've actually got a, uh, I, I tend to work out of uh, virtual machines nowadays. Uh, I've got Hyper-V running. I used to use VirtualBox years ago, um, but I just use Windows Hyper-V or Microsoft Hyper-V. I've got a Windows 11 box running IIS, uh, local SQL Server installed using SQL authentication, uh, I think I have SS, SQL Server Management Studio installed on that VM. Not sure. I probably won't even touch it today. Um, using Visual Studio 2022. Um, you can do it with 2019. You can do it with 2017. I don't know why you ever would, but uh, you can use older versions. Uh, the templates, the latest release is specifically for 2022. Um, you can get older releases on GitHub for the older versions, Visual Studio 2019 and, and so forth. Uh, and I also, within that local environment, have Git for Windows installed. So I mentioned Visual Studio 22. Um, I'm running, I believe, the Community Edition on this particular VM, but it doesn't matter if you're using Community Professional or Enterprise. Uh, these templates will work across uh, all three um, of the various licenses available within Visual Studio. Uh, I always typically work at a community just because it's easier. I've got licenses, but I I just don't need to use them. So uh, I always stick with the community edition. Um, there was a release. I want to say it might actually have been earlier this year. Um, maybe when I did the first release for 2022, uh, there was a bug in the, in the release and it was only supporting one of the three editions, but the intention was to support all three. So uh, I did a, a, a release and a fix for that. 
Um, all right, so let's talk about the templates real quick. So the templates are are built in available within the Visual Studio Marketplace. If you go to marketplace.visualstudio.com, search for DNN, you'll see there's like five or six results there. Um, my templates are there. They are for both Visual Basic.net and C Sharp. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't built a VB.net template or a module in, I don't know, probably close to 10 years now, uh, other than to test out the templates here or there. Uh, but you can still build modules in, uh, in VB, uh, do everything in C Sharp. You can build modules or themes within the, uh, the templates that I have. Um, I'll, I'll show you some of those templates uh, here shortly. You can also navigate to that, uh, that short URL, cjh.am slash DNN temp to uh, get yourself a... Uh... I'm going to go ahead and run Visual Studio 2022 over here. And let me go ahead and just do continue without code. If we switch into Visual Studio, go into extensions and manage extensions. You can essentially go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and search for extensions at that point, and you'll find the DNN project templates. You'll also find Daniel's templates listed there as the second item in the list. Um, version 11.1 .1 was released earlier this spring, maybe even into winter, uh, like I said, with that fix for, for the, all the additions for 2022. I tend to install them right here within the Visual Studio uh, or the, the Visual Studio Marketplace within the Manage Extensions option. You can download a uh, the VSIX file and uh, install them straight into Windows. Um, I like doing it this way just because when there is a new release, you can easy, get easier updates and upgrades available through the Marketplace. So once you have the, the templates installed, I'm going to simply go out and I'm going to create a new project here. So within uh, Visual Studio 2022, 2022, I'm going to do new project. And if I go ahead and just search into the text box for DNN, it will then provide me all of the various template types that, that come with the package. Uh, there's a, a DNN uh, C-sharp DAL2 MVC module, a DAL2 SPA module. There's a VB.net VB compiled module, a C-sharp compiled module. C Sharp compiled theme, C Sharp DAL2, and then VB.NET DAL2. I tend to work with the C Sharp DAL2 compiled module primarily. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use that as I create a module here. Now, I did fail to mention or show you, I guess, that I do have a local instance of DNN running on this particular development environment. It's running in a very specific location. It's on the C drive and a website folder, a folder called dnndev.me. It runs under the URL, dnndev.me. Um, the templates are set up to support that URL. It is possible to change that. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but my preference and, and uh, approach is always to use that same URL just to uh, make it easy and, and repeatable. Uh, most of the time when people run into issues with the templates, uh, it's when they're using a different URL, um, if they've got their paths messed up, et cetera, uh, so whenever I do tutorials, I do recommend people try to follow them in a word for word, just to at least get up and running. If you want to break and extend and go beyond that, absolutely you can. But from a, a debug perspective, it's always easier if people are trying to kind of work from the same type of environment or approach. So this is a local install of DNN. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is now create my uh, the template, the DAL2 compiled module template for C Sharp. And uh, I'm just going to call this. Uh, go ahead. Dave. Just out of curiosity, yeah, um, I think we're all still awesome. seeing just your PowerPoint presentation. Um, That's not, not good at all. Why? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, it tells me I'm sharing. Your mouse. Let me, let me try see, it again. Yeah. Sometimes PowerPoint overrides and uh, you have to exit presenter mode. So where did screen come on? Which screen? No, not that screen anymore. That one. So did you guys not see anything in Visual Studio? Like any of the stuff I was talking through? Not yet. No. How about now? Yeah, now we see Visual yeah, Studio. Okay, that's interesting. Um, sorry about that. I didn't realize. So, so anyways, ahead. back here. I'm in Visual Studio 2022. Um, I've, got, I've gone to the Create New Project dialog. I've searched for DNN. And, and that's where you see the list of, uh, 
of the, the various templates that are, that are installed uh, because I had already installed the template from the extension manager. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the Dell2, uh, the C Sharp Dell2 module template. I'm going to go ahead and give it a project name for just for sample purposes today. I'm just going to call this one Extend Module. Now, when I create a module from these templates, it's very important we choose the right deployment location or the, the project location for the, uh, the module or the extension. In this case, I'm creating a module. So I want to put it into the desktop modules folder for my local DNN install. Some people like to work out of, and I keep seeing the Zoom. Let me know if Zoom goes funky because the Zoom uh, toolbar at the top keeps expanding. I'm not sure why. Um, so if you guys- yeah, We don't see it. So you, you're you good on screen as far it's as- not what block, Okay, see. it's not blocking anything. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. So I put it into a very specific folder for pretty much all of the module templates besides the MVC module. Uh, or mod MVC template, you put it into the desktop modules folder. If you're creating a theme or a skin using the theme or skin or the theme template, you would put that into the portal's default skins folder within your, your DNN instance. We're doing it just with a, um, with a module here. So I'm, I'm creating a module called extend module into desktop modules. I'm not configuring a, a different solution name. It's, it's going to be extend module, just like the project name by default. And it's going to place the solution and the project in the same directory. That's important as well, because if you uncheck that, what ends up happening is it will create a folder inside of desktop modules called extend module. And then it'll create another folder underneath of that called extend module. And everything gets out of whack at that point. So I want to make sure place solution and project in the same directory are the same. Project Wizard was at, oh, I couldn't even tell you how many years ago I added it now. Uh, it was added because um, it, it's very common for people to have a different URL or to have different namespaces and change some owner information, things that you can customize. You can actually customize them after the project gets created, but it's a little more difficult. You got to search and replace across a number of files if you do so. So the project setup wizard here allows you to come in and basically say, okay, let's give it a different namespace. So in this case, we want to call it, let's just call it example.modules instead of Christoc.modules. Uh, and then um, let's go to ryanmore.com instead of uh, Chris, Christoc.com. Whatever you want to do, you can customize those. You can customize the email address and the website. Those, the owner name, email, and website, those get populated into the manifest file for your extension. Uh, so those get displayed to anyone who's installing the extension within DNN. It shows up on the, on the installation process. And then you've got your local dev URL. So if you're running off of a local instance that it, that is not at dnndev.me, you can change the URL there. For now, I'm just going to leave that. Go ahead and click OK. And that's going to go through and create our module based on the project. When you first create the module, it does load up some documentation. There's a, an HTML page that loads up here, documentation.html. Uh, just with some basic information, you can review uh, anything you might want to go in and, and adjust or just double check. There's a link to some tutorials as well. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just close that window. And let me actually, let me see if I can get back to my PowerPoint here real quick. Do you guys see my PowerPoint if I switch back? Yes, yeah, you're back on. Okay. And let me go ahead and switch. So on the PowerPoint, what I was trying to get to is just making sure I'm going through the process that I want to go through. So get a new project. I'm not going to go into the overview of the project. It's a, it's essentially, an, it's an extension. It's a module. It has a view control settings control and an edit control. It's pretty basic, but what these templates allow you to do now is to very easily utilize this module and, and, package it up so you can install it within your DNN instance. The easiest way to do that is if you go into Visual Studio and you switch from debug mode into release mode. And if you do a build, and let me confirm, do you get, are you guys seeing Visual Studio again? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> so if you go in and, and do a build, what you'll end up with is Visual Studio will go out and, and compile the, the project itself. It will also, using some build scripts, 
package up the extension into an install zip file. We'll also create a source zip file. In, in our case, extend module and then install. There's two, there's an install folder within the, this project now. Actually, it's not part of the project in Visual Studio, but it exists in the folder structure. So it created a zip file for an install and a source package. We can now leverage those within our DNN instance. So if I switch back over here to DNN, I need to refresh just to get everything loaded back up again. And I'll log in as my, my super user account. Eventually. Yes, your hand focused. Thank you, uh, sir. <laughs> so I'll log back in as my, my uh, super user account, navigate into the settings extensions window or menu, and I can go ahead and in install my extension now. So to do that, I'm going to take that uh, the zip files that were created, I go to extend module, I go to install, and I could choose either one of those. I'm just going to do the install because it's a smaller upload. It'll then walk me through the installation process here. If I had changed any of that information in the, the setup wizard, that information would be changed here instead of chrisdoc.com. I'd say ryanmore.com, um, the, the email address, the URLs, et cetera. And then go ahead and click on next, click on accept license and the installation will complete. So we've now created a module, we packaged the module, we've installed the module within our instance. Um, it makes it now easy for us to go into pages. I'm just going to add a new page. We'll throw the module on a page and uh, go from there. So I like to just from a, in a development environment perspective, if I'm working out of a kind of a clean DNN install for development, I always have a page called modules that I'll, I'll create a child page for each of the modules that I'm testing and throw it onto a, an individual page. So created a new page called extend module. It'll show up under the modules menu here in a moment. And then we can, because I forgot to deselect the default template. Uh, we can go ahead and throw that module on a page. So this one is called extend module. Drop it in there. And now we've got a module. Now this, the, the module that gets created by these templates is very basic. It allows you to add items. And these items can have a name, a description, and an assigned user. So it's almost like a task module. That was actually what it was based off of originally. Uh, back in my DNN Corp days, we had a module called the task module uh, or to-do module that you. So we can now display that list of tasks. And for each item, we can edit or delete. Super basic functionality, but allows individuals to kind of get up and running and start to, to work with, uh, with modules with, with some function to start, right? So to, um, to extend it now, let me, let me go ahead and take, take you back over here to the project within Visual Studio. And if I expand- Oh, thanks for the zoom in. Yeah, if I expand the, um, expand the window under, or the Solution Explorer, go to the Build Scripts folder. The Build Scripts folder has a module package.targets file. And this is the MS Build uh, Script file that essentially does all that magic, all that uh, ability to package and deploy the module uh, or package the module into deployable uh, zips. So I'm, I'm not going to go into all the details here, but what I want to show you is what is inside of this, because this is where if you want to add things or you need to include additional things within your modules, this is how you go about doing it. So out of the box, this particular script is going to go look for all ASCX files or user controls that exist within this particular directory, extend module, and any child directories below it. It's going to look the same for any ASMX files, CSS, HTML, HTM, ResX, ASPX, JavaScript, text, and then anything in uh, the images folder. So it's essentially going to go and try to include all of those files 
within the zip package that gets created for your installable extension. What you'll notice though, is it doesn't have anything related to DLLs. And a common thing for module developers is to come in and say, okay, we need to include a reference to another library of some sort. So in order to actually include those DLLs for deployment, you need to make some changes to this target file. So let me, let me start off by um, actually just add a, I'm gonna add a reference into this project. And since I collapsed my solution explorer, it's a little more difficult. So I'm gonna add a reference over here to references. Um, and I'm just gonna browse to a local, um, a local DLL. And I'm, I'm honestly just gonna grab one out of the bin folder for the DNN instance, just, just for simplicity's sake. I'm gonna grab the country list box DLL because it's there. So if I go ahead and I select that, I click okay. This extension now expects that that, that DLL is going to exist. It needs that one. It, it needs it to be able to compile and that's going to work because we can already compile local install. But if we were to take this module and try to install it into a different DNN instance, and, and I picked a bad example by choosing country list box because every DNN instance has country list box. But, but pretend like every instance doesn't have it. If we were to try to install a module, this module is going to fail to install or fail to run when you put it on a page because it's now expecting a DLL that no longer exists. Does, it can't be found. And let me prove that to you. So to prove that to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to build and I'm going to build the solution again. And if we navigate over here to our install folder where the packages get created, in either of the packages, we can choose either one. I'm going to choose the install package. If I go ahead and navigate in, what that actually is, is that's a zip file. Now, I don't have the, um, I don't have show extensions on in this VM. So it just looks like a folder, but trust me, it's a zip file. It says it over on the right. If I go ahead and navigate into the install package and uh, did you say something, Ryan? Sorry, just light heckling from over here. I, I mentioned that uh, about five minutes ago that, that was the first thing that blew me away is I couldn't see the file extension name in your folder. <laughs> uh, so I, I navigate into that zip file. I go into bin and, and you'll see that there's one DLL there. There's the extend module.dll. That is part of the package. That's part of the module. It gets included because it's, because it's defined and I'll show you where it's defined in the, um, in this uh, package targets folder or file, excuse me. So, we need to include an, that other DLL in order for it to be in, included into our install package so that it can then be installed if anyone were to take our module and try to utilize it. So if we go ahead and scroll, actually, rather than scrolling, I'm simply just going to do control F and search for DLL. And what you'll find there, <coughs> if we do search for DLL, is you're actually going to get two references to it. And I'll talk about why that is in just a sec, but let me just show you the second reference. So there's the first one. This is, it's this line here. We're going to come back to that. And then the next one actually looks just about the same, but it's, it's further down in the file. So the way that these, the, the, tar, the templates work and the, the build script works for my templates, it goes through and it, it basically says, okay, I need to go grab all of the files that I'm expected to include within this particular module. And it grabs them it puts them into a temporary folder. I think it's actually called the package folder. Actually, it looks like it is right here. So it puts it into a folder called package within my extend module folder. And as it goes through and packages up, it kind of puts all the file and then it wipes that package folder. And then it does the same thing again for the source package. Now, the source package includes, if we scroll back up, the source package includes the same thing as before, ASCX, ASMX, CSS, but it also includes .cs files and the packages folder if you were doing um, NuGet packages or, or packages that are, that are included there. It includes CS designer files, the project, the targets, and the C SLN, the solution file. So there's, there's two different includes 
that are defined here in these in these item groups. And these are actually defined at the top of the targets file. So this basically says, hey, go get all of these file types for your install package. That's why I call it install include. And then this one says, go get all the files that are appropriate for the source package, the source include. So if we go ahead and scroll back down to DLLs, if I want to include a new DLL, what I simply do is I'm just going to copy that entire line. And, and just for visibility's sake, I'm going to move down here a little bit and, and create a, uh, a section here. Okay, so I'm going to copy that line and then I'm going to go ahead and choose the DLL name. Now, what you'll notice here is there's this assembly name DLL uh, uh, attribute or, or property uh, variable, I guess, excuse me, with the dollar sign, paren, assembly name. That is, uh, 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 excuse me, it's a property that's defined. I want to say it's on the project file itself. So if we can't see it, unless we were to right click over here and do unload project, and then you could go into the, the XML for the project file. And you would see that there's a, a definition for this assembly name that points to uh, extend module.dll or extend module is the name. In our case, I wanna include a very specific DLL. It's just country list box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in country list box DLL. And what that will do is by defining that there is that will then start to include it into uh, our packaging process. Now, I do wanna do this twice, one for the install section and one for the source section. So I'm gonna go ahead and from here, I'm just gonna do hit F3 on my keyboard real quick just to find my DLL references. And then I go down to the next section, which doesn't have it. And I paste that in again. So if I go ahead and click on save and I go ahead and click on build, build solution, I get a build succeeded there. Now I to the install folder, and we can see in the install folder that the date modified, the timestamp has changed. So it's now 6.13. So I go back into that install folder or the install zip file. I go into the bin. I now have country list box .dll. So that will include the DLL into the install package. We still have one more step, which is to tell DNN about the DLL and where it needs to go during the installation process. So that's actually done through the DNN or the modules manifest file. Over here on the right, I go to extend module.dnn. And if I go to, down to the very bottom of the file, I've got a section here for component type assembly. And right now there's currently one assembly inside of there. If I go ahead, I can type in another one and just tape, type in the name country list uh, country list box .dll. And I press control K control D to format. And it just changed all my formatting. Sorry about that. Just kind of a, a habit to, to do so. Um, but at least puts them both into the same uh, indentation here. <coughs> so at this point, we now have a DLL that's included within our module in our package. It's included in the manifest and it's in the, the install package. So when we go to install the module again, it would actually be put into the appropriate location. Now, in our development environment, we don't actually have to do anything. It's already there, it's already working. We've already installed the module. We don't need to make additional changes to it, but this now is, is ready for deployment into other environments. If we have a stage environment, a production environment, or maybe we're making an open source module, we want to distribute this we could then put it out onto GitHub and people could download the install uh, zip file. So that allows us to go through and extend the, the targets file to include that DLL. Now you might do this for other files. You might not. There's, there's really, I'd, I'd be open to any feedback you guys might have, but for the most part, when you're building the front end of a, of a, uh, a module, you're almost always doing it with ASCX, CSS, and JavaScript files. There's not much else that you might include in a module. You may, if you're doing something, some custom module, maybe where you're distributing like 3D files of some, some format, 
um, that are proprietary uh, file type extensions, something along those lines. Those would not be included by default. So you could, you could modify the targets file to include them. You might do it by including uh, just the entire folder. So let's say, for example, we just had a folder called 3D files within our, our module where we wanted to keep track of those and make them available for distribution. Or they're, maybe they're being include the, the folder and have all the files within that folder. Now, I would also want to do the same thing into the source group as well, because I've modified the install include. I would want to include the source include so that each of the packages gets the appropriate files. DLLs are the most common thing uh, that people will include additionally. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you're distributing libraries, DLLs, you want to make sure that you're applying or you have the appropriate licenses to do so, especially if you're going open source, if you're putting references to, to proprietary libraries that are licensed, you don't necessarily want to be distributing those DLLs uh, out as, as an open source project within your extensions without the appropriate uh, permissions or ability to do so from a licensing perspective. So, <coughs> all right. Let me pause there. I've been talking for a few minutes. Are there any questions about extending the, the MS build package? Is, uh, is it a naive question to ask about overlap of those files and uh, you know, specifically things you're putting into the bin that um, you need to pay attention to make sure you're not overriding, I don't know, an older version of the Newtonsoft DLL because there's already a newer one there? What, uh, what cautions? can you do right here to help with that? Yeah. So, th so that's, that's a great question, Ryan. There, there are, uh, there's definitely risk to distributing DLLs, right? And, and if you are referencing older or newer versions of libraries that, are, that other modules are utilizing, um, there are ways to go about uh, installing those and, and referencing those DLLs so that you can have multiple versions of, of DLLs available. I'll be blunt. I haven't done that in so many years. I forget how to do it. I feel like there's, there's ways to do it within the, uh, the manifest file. Um, but it, it, it would take me a little bit of research just to, to remember how to do it, but it's We're definitely talking some... the binding redirect. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you, inside of the assembly, if you declare the version, so you have a name, you have path, you can also declare version and put your version, DNN will do it for you. You have to reference that version in the manifest. Yeah, just in the okay. manifest. So that's like, what you're saying. Well, you don't yep. have line numbers, but where you have name and path, there's yep. an additional one you can put. That's a version. Gotcha. And as long as you put the version here, the NN will create the binding redirect for you. Okay. Uh, automatically, just have to be aware that if if you do, it, you're going to replace what's there, no matter what version was there. So you that that's in theory. Does that mean that in the past you put it underneath of bin slash something else and therefore you're referencing something separate? This is a bit more complex. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't nice recommend it. For me. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, a way, there's a way to do it, but it's, yeah. it's more complex. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you use an entity framework and another module uses entity framework. If you have six dot I don't know, 6.1 and 6.2, 6.2 wins. Whoever had 6.1 now uses 6.2. So you pull every, everyone to that version. So it's uh, something to watch for. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go to, well, I'm, actually, I'm not gonna remove that. I'll just leave it there for now. Um, <clears throat> the other common thing you may do in, when you're building modules and, and working within, uh, within the extensions is, is to add additional views or additional controls. Um, the view control right now, if we go ahead and load that up here within the, the project, is pretty basic. It's just a repeater uh, that's displaying a list of those items that you're creating. Um, the items, as I mentioned, are kind of like to-do items. You could rename them. Um, and they're, they're actually under components here. There's an item.cs uh, and then an item controller, uh, which you can access. But uh, if you wanted to have a, a, let's say we've got a list view right now, which says, okay, here's, here's all the list of items. You may create an additional view, a single item view 
that takes a query string parameter, loads it up. You can do so. Uh, I, the easiest way that I find to do it is to um, just go into the manifest file and essentially start to copy one of the existing module controls and create a new module control. Um, I, you might start with either edit or uh, the default, which is the view control up above. <coughs> Excuse me, what you're able to do then is to provide a key or a, a URL control that can tell DNN which view to load. I also, um, instead of using the DNN control view or control loader, uh, my more, uh, my personal approach is to actually do that myself. Uh, what I'd end up doing is creating uh, a view controller that, that loads either list or single item display um, in the view control itself. So I'm not going to create that on the fly, but let me go ahead and just, just show you guys. Um, if you're looking for an example of that, if you go to uh, a module that I've got available on GitHub called DNN Simple Article, uh, if you go into, let's say, the view control here, it's view.ascx, you can see the view control for that is about as simple as you can get, at least on the front end, right? It's just got a placeholder in it. The code behind, however, is more complex. So the code behind for that view control is, okay, what are we doing? And in this case, it's saying by default, it's going to load an article list, ASCX. It's inside of a subfolder called controls. Uh, and if, it, if it's got a display type, depending on the settings within the module, it'll load different controls and, and embed those on the, on the page. What this allows like in, in this particular module is called DNN simple article. It was just like a very simple, crazy, simple blog. Um, initially it started out with very similar to the, um, the template. Uh, it had essentially a title and a description or a title and a body. Um, it's got a little bit more than that. Now it's got title body. It's got a description. It's got a thumbnail, things like that. But uh, it started out with the same approach. I just kind of use this, this control loader and, and a placeholder to, control the display because that then really also allows me to start to get in and start changing URLs and, and the way, uh, the way things work. Um, and it, the reason I created it, I just didn't care for the blog solutions that were out there. I used to blog everything and, and, and actually everything at chrishammond.com still does comes through engage publish, which is something I wrote 18 years ago when I was at engage. Um, but that was way too robust and, and overkill for a lot of things. So I created this simple article module to, to create a simpler blog and a simpler way to, to approach content. All right. Um, let me go ahead and shift a little bit here and let me show you what um, the templates actually consist of and, and walk you through a, a few minutes of that. And if you want to get in and actually customize the templates that get created, like the, the, the basis of the templates, I'll show you where you can do that. So it's pretty, um, I'd say it's pretty simple. It's not actually all that simple. It took a lot of beating my head on the wall to figure it out, make it work over the years. But um, now that it's up and running, it's actually pretty simple to get started and work with. And, and I say that because I tend to move, I've moved machines over the last 10 years. Um, and it, it's really easy to kind of get up and running on a new machine, a new VM um, by being able to clone this repo. So the project itself is at github.com slash Chris Hammond slash DNN templates. What you can do though, is you can just clone that particular, sorry, that's a sneak peek of what's coming later. Um, you can clone the, uh, <laughs> it the repo. It was a great photo. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, clone that particular repo. Let me go ahead and switch over. And, um, and, and I've already done this, so you don't actually need to see the, uh, that cloning process, but I have the, uh, I have the repo local. So this one's not near as, as uh, stringent on where you put things, right? You can put it wherever you want in terms of how you organize. I organize into a projects folder. Oh, this is when you clone the, the repo on GitHub, you will get all of this, these, these three folders. So there's a C sharp, a VB and a, a VSIX folder. I really just need to do away with the first two. 
those haven't been touched or maintained or worked with in probably close to eight years. Um, once I created this VSIX approach, everything is within that folder. So these are just remnants that I just ne have never removed from the, uh, from the repository. But if you go into the VSIX folder, there you will find a DNN template solution. So this is a Visual Studio solution. This, the latest release of this is for Visual Studio 2022. If you wanted to work in 2020 or 2019, you could. You'd, you'd have to go in and actually make some changes to this particular, this project in order to make that work though. So the solution itself consists of the main project, which is DNN templates, that is what controls and, and actually packages and does all of the things that are necessary to create the templates as, as or create the, the module templates uh, that work within Visual Studio. And that creates the VSIX, the VSIX file, which is kind of an installer. A VSIX file is really just a zip file. Just it's zip renamed. Like if you, if you download a VSIX file and you want to see what's in it, just change the extension to zip and you can open it up in windows and, and look inside. Um, but inside of here, it's got a bunch of different things, right? It's got release notes for the, uh, the project, uh, they go out there. Um, it's got some logos. There's some code here and there. You're not really dealing with code. What you're typically doing here. In, in the templates as you're getting into the VSIX manifest, very similar to the DNN manifest where it defines everything for, for the templates. Uh, we can define our description. We can define a license file, the icon that's associated with it, any tags that we want listed and make it searchable within the, the Visual Studio Marketplace. We've got our release notes. In the install targets, this is where we start to target the versions of Visual Studio. Excuse me. I could make this installable within Visual Studio 2019 and 2022. I choose not to. I, I just don't want to maintain support for 2019. I let people go back and grab the old versions if they want to work with 2019. They can still get the, the, the VSIX installer from GitHub. I just don't want to try to maintain and test across multiple versions. So inside of here is where we kind of say, okay, we're, we're targeting community, we're targeting pro, we're targeting enterprise. Version 17 is Visual Studio 2022. So we, we always say, okay, we're starting it at, at in there, but we're not, 18 isn't available. So we don't have to worry about it. Um, from there, then we have assets. And these assets are all the template projects themselves. So if we take a look, at the rest of the solution here. And I'm not going to go into each of them, but I am going to go into the DAL2 modules, the C-sharp DAL2 module. This is the project that defines that particular module template, the C-sharp DAL2, which is the one that I just used. So inside of that particular project, we've got a C, a C DAL2 mod VS template file, another manifest file here, that defines information for this particular module. It has a default name here called DNN module, but we've got variables all throughout this, these projects where those names will be replaced. And that's where when, you, when I created the module, I called it extend module. Uh, it got replaced all throughout this particular project based on these variables. So there's a root namespace, an owner name. There's a safe project name. That's where... Uh, extend module came from or got replaced, right? It, it will take the CS proj file, which originally is called DNN template CS proj, which you can find right here. It will replace that with safe project name .cs proj. So extend module in our case. All of the controls for this particular module are defined here. So we've got our edit control, our view control, our settings control, Every file that's in that project that gets created from the template is defined here within this, um, within this VS template manifest. So if we want to extend our projects, maybe we've got a very common template that we all, maybe we, we wanted to create a module template that had this, this control loader uh, that I mentioned in, in the DNN simple article that uses placeholders and, and various controls. 
we, we would essentially come into this project and start to change out the files that we need to change. Now, personally, the way that I created each of these originally, and originally it was like 10 years ago, um, was I went through and I created a module within Visual Studio and it had a view control, a settings control, and edit control. And it was just a module. It was a compilable package of module. <coughs> I then essentially said, okay, let me turn this into a template. So I had to create a template. I had to import all those files into this particular type of template within this project. And then I had to go through and, and make changes to those. So everywhere there's a namespace, I have a variable called root namespace and then save project name that puts in, in, in the case of extend module dot modules was the namespace that we put in place. So it takes whatever comes from the, the setup project that, that little wizard that we saw and replaces those all throughout the project. You've got to do a lot of manual work. You have to go through these templates and, and put in the variables in the appropriate places. And I think even up until recently, there was still one little string somewhere in one of these projects just within the last year that was missing a variable. Uh, it was hard coded to something. I had to go back and, and replace it. So the view control has, has those, the, the code behind for the view control is the same, right? There's the namespace definition, the variables, but the, the code itself is, is pretty basic. We've got an item controller. It goes out and get a, gets a list of items from the module or from the database uh, and then binds that to the, uh, the repeater list. So if we want to make changes, we can absolutely go through and start to make changes and include those in these templates. If you know, if you wanted to release your, your own version of the templates, rename them, get rid of the visual basic, you could just simply come through here and start removing these. Um, once you're done, it, it, it's pretty, pretty much just a Visual Studio project, right? So all I got to do is come in here and click on build, and it's going to go out and do a build for this entire solution, which packages up all those, uh, the, all, all the projects, all the templates themselves. And, uh, and puts them into essentially a installable file. Now, just to show you where that is in Windows, I'd go back into my projects folder, I'd go into DNN templates, and then into that VSIX folder. And then underneath of there, there's this DNN templates folder. If I go into bin, I go into release, ultimately I can find there's a DNN templates.vsix which again, you can't see because I don't have, where can I change that? Uh, I don't have show extensions, but uh, just trust me, that is a, it, it is a VSIX file, VSIX extension. From there, we can click on it or we can, to, to install, if I go ahead and try to do that, it's gonna bring it up here. I think it's probably gonna tell me it's already installed because uh, it is. And we didn't actually change the version, it's still the same version that I already have installed, but we can go through and, and make changes, uh, test these. The other thing that it's great in Visual Studio, if you've got the VSIX solution up, um, if you're in debug mode and you hit F5, it will run the project in debug mode or it won't because there's build errors. I don't know why. This Shot. Is there. Shocked. Yeah, thanks. I don't know where that's coming from. Looks like, I don't know. I'm going to have to. What it actually ends up doing is it loads up a new instance of Visual Studio in kind of this, this quasi debug fake state where it will install the VSIX into that instance, but not across for your machine. Like it, it only exists in that debug instance. And as soon as you close the debug window, it goes away, it disappears. So you don't, you don't risk replacing your templates with a debug version of your templates. It allows you to kind of run Visual Studio in this debug mode, which then you can then go through and create a module using the new test version of your template uh, and, and make any changes that are necessary. So. It's pretty, pretty cool, pretty easy to work with once you get it up and running. Um, I will tell you that, let me see if I can find it. In order to work with these VSIX files within uh, your install for Visual Studio, you do need to, 
configure the Visual Studio extension development option. So I've shown, I've tried to show it here on the screen. It's this one in the bottom, bottom right portion. Um, you need to check that in your Visual, Visual Studio installer. Um, once that is available, then you have the ability to open and, and work with those VSIX files or the projects. So, all right. Um, let me switch back over here. <laughs> I've been talking for like an hour, just under an hour. Uh, open up to any questions you guys might have. What is MS build? <laughs> um, MS, I couldn't even tell you anymore. MS build. I was kidding. Old, I was uh, kidding. Uh, I was kidding. Sorry. <laughs> so it, it's, it's Microsoft's old tooling for, uh, that allows you to do some automation and scripting. So it, it, there's probably better tools available today. Um, I just haven't had the motivation, the time to learn anything else and replace uh, years of work uh, to, to do it. So it still works. It still works in 2022. Used to be when, these first, when we first started creating and maintaining these templates that you actually had to go in and install MS build community tasks. Like there were projects that you had to go out and, and do and get, get up and running. And nowadays it's all, all included here and, and works pretty well, hopefully out of the box, except when you're trying to debug and figure out why you can't debug one particular thing. All right. Um, well, I mentioned earlier, um, you could find my, oh, I'll get a dog saying hello here. Uh, you could find me on, uh, on Twitter, Chris talk as, as uh, Ryan was saying, uh, find me online, Chris .com or Chris .com. Um, please feel free to reach out. If you guys have any questions, anything that you'd like to see in the templates or ideas for those templates. Why, why is it Chris talk? <laughs> What's the C for? I don't know. So when I, when I, <laughs> when I signed up for my email address in college, so in 1995, you were given a list of options that you could choose. It was some combination of your first name and last name, or maybe your first name and your first name. Uh, <laughs> and for some reason that was available. Like I couldn't choose Chris at umr.edu. I couldn't choose Chris Hammond at umr.edu, but Chris stock was available. So in 1995, I, I chose that. So my second email address ever was that. My first one was fpgs50b at prodigy.com. So that one. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, Ryan, that's a good uh, trivia uh, uh, candidate there for yeah. uh, what is it, Chris Talk. Oh, that's great. Don't even. That is. That would be don't a great even. trivia item. I'll, put it on the Jeopardy. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take some notes and I'll put it in. Although, um, just just FYI out there, I've probably got just rattling around in the back of my head at least one more good DNA Jeopardy with with new questions to it. Um, but I've been looking into doing a new format for the next time we do games, and uh, the ten thousand dollar pyramid uh, format is uh, is what I'm working on next. So we'll uh, we'll have something else there coming up soon. How um, soon? We need it now. <laughs> we need it now. <laughs> The next time that we need a, a, a spot filler or we've got holidays coming. Um, back over your name, though, Chris Doc, um, I think it fits well with your boss, and you have a, a garden boss, and that's your garden talk. Wait, what was the, what was the name of your garden boss? Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I've got a, a bot taking pictures of, well, what used to be a garden. Now it's just a pile of dirt. Um, takes a picture <laughs> of my backyard every, every hour, and I just I called it garden talk. So... There we go. <laughs> it, it, which it actually surprises Burn. me. People call it talk more than people call it Christ OC. Um, so I, I don't, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't come off as too offensive. But if people, if, if people Christ read it more OC. as Christ OC, it might be a little more offensive. Yeah. yeah. I figured you were just ahead of the curve on uh, TikTok and you just wanted to get in on the game early. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they stole my idea. <laughs> <clears throat> well, um, folks, I think we're kind of wrapping up. And uh, one of the enjoyable parts about being online with everyone is 
Uh, we've got a good peanut gallery going, so we, we get some heckling and some questions, and we enjoy ourselves. But when we have record and we post these online, and then we stop the meeting or the recording, and we have the rest of the meeting, and that's when we bring out all of our extra libations. And instead of it being coffee in the uh, mugs, it gets a little stronger, and then we have uh, have some more enjoyable conversations. So. Um, you know, stopping here for the meeting is, is a good natural time, but uh, the fun will continue because we'll keep on talking. Um, so uh, if you're watching this online and you want to come join us, remember, it's always the third Thursdays of every month. Uh, I believe that uh, that fits us in for May the 19th as the next one. Uh, looks like that's right. Um, we are alternating our time spot so that we can have folks uh, across the pond join us uh, pretty well. Uh, so the next meeting, uh, May the 19th, will be during the daytime here uh, in the States. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I should look ahead and schedule and see who's on for, uh, for next week. But um, I want to just uh, kind of wrap up by saying thank you very much, uh, Chris, uh, for doing a deep dive um, and pulling uh, some more things. You know, those, those extra next step questions that people always ask. Okay, now I've got my template. How do I build an installer? I love that you just went right into that one, and um, you know, it took minutes uh, to, to run through and do. So, um, hey Ryan, I hope, uh, uh, get a lot out of it, and then follow up with more. David, and that next month will be Benny Sue. He's here with us tonight, uh, but he'll be presenting next month. So we're looking forward to that one. That is fantastic. All right, uh, good to see you, Benny. You want to say hi? You want to put in a plug? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Benny. Uh, so for the next one, I'll be doing a topic on DNN using it as a backend and Ionic uh, mobile app development. Awesome. Yeah, so stay fantastic. tuned. Fantastic. Absolutely. Excellent. It's been a while since we've done a uh, connection with Ionic at all. That'll be fantastic. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We enjoyed having you here for Southern Pride DNN User Group, and we will see you soon. Thanks for having me, guys.